If you've used a computer in your lifetime, you should know the name Federico Fagin. Let's talk with the man who changed the trajectory of modern technological development. Want to take a trip to Silicon Valley? Come on, let's go. Today I am in the heart of Silicon Valley in California and I'm speaking with Federico Fagin. <laughs> Federico led the team that created the Intel 4004, which was the first commercial microprocessor. This powered the majority of modern computers and condensed the power of machines that took up entire rooms into a microprocessor the size of a small fingernail. Do you have a sense for the magnitude of what you had done at that time? Did you see how it would impact the trajectory of technological development? Yeah, I, I, yeah. you know, when you have something that is 10 times better, than something else. Yeah. I mean, you, you got you got something, right? I mean, I was a kid, but still, you know, I was not stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After this incredible innovation, Federico expanded his focus to investigate the limitations of artificial intelligence. He wondered if there was a way to harness the essence of a human being into a machine, and this manifested in the concept of creating a conscious computer. And so I said, how would I do? A conscious computer. How how could I do that? Yeah. Okay. And the more I thought about it, the more impossible the task appeared. He realized that the nature of consciousness was not being studied or understood, and this was the next frontier he wanted to explore. So there has to be some reality behind the reality of the physical world, which is a Boolean reality. Here you have zero or one. Yeah. You cannot have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. posits that consciousness is the very fabric of our universe. He poses the question, what if the energy of the Big Bang was conscious? Then the very fabric of all living beings would be comprised of conscious energy. Consciousness is a fundamental property of nature, of reality, of the world, before matter. In other words, yeah. it is consciousness that creates matter instead of the other way around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is not a philosophical study of consciousness. It's actually a, it's a, it's an exercise in physics, okay. trying to develop a new physics, starting with cognitive principles instead of materialistic principles. Over time, Federico has realized that the external reality is an illusion put forth by the senses, and the real strength of perspective relies on the internal reality. The outer world is only a world of symbols. The inner world is where reality, where ontology is. I wondered how Federico was able to liberate himself from his social and scientific framework to develop such innovative models. How do you, do you think you've had that ability your whole life? How do you think you've been able to do that? Um, that that's a very perceptive question, actually. Um, most people will not think that. Um, in fact, it was the hardest thing to do, to, to uh, free myself of a certain way uh, of looking at reality, which was what I, I learned at school, you know. I learned, I mean, that's what physics tells you, is done this way. So, Through developing a model that quite literally changes the way we view our universe, it is no surprise that Federico's view of himself has changed. He describes specifically how his definition of success has developed through his lifetime. To, to me, success in my life, and I haven't reached that yet, is you having a ball in your life, okay? You enjoy your life from the inside, from your own feeling, seeing you're living as a adventure every day, every moment is, is something new. As you can imagine, there is so much more to this conversation than we can get to in this short video clip. So please take a look at our full video conversation, which will be linked below. In addition, you can read the article counterpart to this interview on my website, theconversationalistnora.com. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll speak to you soon.